Hey, what's going on? What's going on? Welcome to a special edition of Kidney Disease Education Moment. I am your host, Steve Belcher. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in wherever you are. This is definitely a uh, important topic to, to, to talk about, and that is natural disasters. What does it mean to you as a dialysis patient? Look, we all heard about the recent earthquake in Puerto Rico, 6.5 magnitude. We had one kidney warrior who experienced that up and personal, Sandy Nina Salas experienced that and had to experience aftershocks and tremors. What would you do if you found yourself in that situation undergoing kidney dialysis? What would you do? Very important topic to talk about tonight. Please share this video, share this broadcast. I hope to have on uh, Jared A. Warrior. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jared A. Brown, host of Warrior's Quest. He may join us a little later. They're having snow in Hooper, Utah. What about the Warriors in Hooper, Utah, where it's snowing now? So this is something that even though it hasn't happened to you yet or may not, you may not experience a natural disaster that uh, may have put you in a, a situation where you need to have things prepared and ready to go, it's always good to be prepared. I mean, you it will not hurt you. It would do more better than harm to be prepared and have this stuff ready to go just in case uh, natural disaster strikes and hits you. So please, before I start uh, the education moment, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Urban Health Outreach Media. We need your support. Um, even if you don't go watch the videos, it's tons of videos and we're constantly uploading more. We have over 400, maybe 500 uh, broadcast that we've done that e that hasn't been uploaded. So maybe about a hundred something has already been uploaded. So there's multiple shows you can watch. We have past shows with past hosts like Stephanie Mo Davis, Tanya Hobson, uh, Sorrell Sa Speaks, Kenneth Sorensen, Lisa Baxter, Warriors Quest and Urban Reno talk with Tamika and Steve. I even have um, some as a education shows on there. And look, I have uh, a statement from Sandy Nina Silas. Welcome back, Sandy. God bless you. And I'm glad you're okay. And Sandy says, most in Puerto Rico were not prepared. Now, what does that tell you? You have someone who just got back to the States from this catastrophe saying that most in Puerto Rico were not prepared. And she says, still not prepared. Come on, guys. We have somebody who was on the front line, warrior who experienced this, who God blessed to able to make it back here to share this. And we hope to have Sandy on a later show or a future show, a, a really recent future show coming up to share her experience, what she did to get through it, and how she maintained mentally and psychologically through the aftershocks. Because imagine having to be in a dialysis unit with a roof over your head and have to experience the aftershock not knowing if the roof is going to crumble right before you. So God bless you, Sandy. Welcome back. You deserve all the accolades because I'm sure there's other warriors who've been through natural disasters and hurricanes, but I haven't seen anyone 
talk about it other than you. And it's good that you are speaking of it. Oh, you're still in Puerto Rico. Okay, okay, okay. So we're definitely sending out prayers. If you're watching this video, I'm sorry, if you're watching this live broadcast, please send nothing but uh, prayers, shout outs and special love to Sandy Nina uh, Salas. She's still in Puerto Rico. I think she may be returning Monday now that I can remember. But please send your thoughts, prayers uh, her way uh, on her page um, and just keep her in prayer. And thank you for watching all the way from, from Puerto Rico, Sandy. God bless you. So, guys, let's talk about hurricane disaster plan and natural disasters. Um, but look, let me tell you how real this is. How many people have been following on the news the Australian wildfires? Lawrence, Hurst, God bless you from the UK. Brother, is the Australian wildfires affecting you in any way? If you can just put a thumbs up or let us know that you're okay, um, you know, the residual smoke. But the Australia wildfire, if you've been following it, 27 dead, 2,000 homes destroyed, and 18 million acres burnt, and about a billion animals may have been killed in this wildfire. Listen, you have people on dialysis in Australia as well. We send our prayers to Puerto Rico. We send our prayers out to Australia as well. This can happen here. Any natural disaster, no one is immune from it. Now, we're on this planet to talk about uh, global warning. There's nowhere to go unless you got a rocket and you're going to, you know, hook up with... Uh, uh, What's that guy's name who who has this uh, space program who owns the Teslas? Uh, Elon Musk. Unless you got 250,000, 300,000 to get on that space station, go for a ride to get away when they offer that, there's nowhere to hide. And if you want dialysis, the same holds true for you and even much worse because you need to get that much needed treatment so the toxin doesn't build up. So. Then I think about earthquakes. Then I think about where you're at. So let's define, uh, let's talk about the hurricane disaster plan. All right. And let's describe, you got like hurricane season, but then you got hurricane watch and hurricane warning. So normally hurricane season starts June 1 and ends November 30th, around that time. A uh, hurricane watch means a hurricane may threaten an area. Again, a hurricane watch means a hurricane may threaten an area. A 36-hour notice is usually given. Uh, a hurricane warning, on the other hand, means a hurricane is expected. Okay, it's expected. To strike an area, Lord have mercy, a 24-hour notice is given. How many warriors been impacted by a hurricane? Please, uh, interact. That's the only way we're going to get this education out here where we interact, know what other people are going through, how they dealt with it, how you dealt with it how we can deal with it as a whole, how we can move forward and be prepared, better prepared um, in the future. Uh, Lawrence Hurst from the UK is sending out prayers to Sandy and families in Puerto Rico. God bless you, Lawrence, for watching from the UK and for sending out uh, prayers to Sandy. He also says, it's painful watching nature destroy each other families. Uh, 
affected laws of life and sadness. I agree with you, buddy. I agree. And, and, and Lawrence, if you can get our show out to other warriors in the UK, friends, families, or dialysis clinics over there where they make a benefit from our broadcast, please, by all means, share our shows, our links, and let these guys benefit as well. Um, so what should you do if a hurricane happens or a warning or a um, watch is forecasted for your area? Or better yet, what will happen? What will happen? Possibly nothing, depending on the location. You know, you got Florida, you got California with their wildflowers, Louisiana, the Gulf Coast, Mississippi. Uh, they normally get hurricanes. You remember Katrina came through and just wreaked havoc. Okay. Then you got Florida, the coastal lines down there, Maryland, uh, going up New York, Massachusetts. It, basically, what I'm saying is no one is really immune. And then if you, even if you live in the inner inland, right, you still got to worry about um, tornadoes and other uh, windy conditions that can knock out power lines, power. Um, it's, 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 it's real. I was unfortunate when I did travel nurse. I was down in Houston down from 2006 to 2008. I couldn't even leave. I only went down there for a 13 week assignment, y'all. And they wanted to keep re-upping. It was for seniors. I worked with them through uh, through um, foundation medical staffing, and um, these I couldn't even leave. A thirteen week assignment ended up turning into two years down in Houston, right? And um, I was unfortunate enough to be caught in Hurricane Harvey. All right. Now, what I can say, all right, what I can do, give props to the Fresenius, uh operation down there, they did look out for their staff who were affected by the hurricane. They topped off your vehicle with gas. They had a, a gas tanker. Uh, they gave me free water, bottles of water and, and, and other stuff. So... No, they do. They did have a response team down there. That's my first time seeing a response team. So, yeah, they looked out for me when I was down there. But shit, they still a uh, money hungry, greedy corporation that um, preys on sick patients with chronic diseases instead of trying to keep people off, you're steady building clinics and urban communities. So, you know, even though they looked out for me, they still a, 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 a crummy organization. So, but listen, possibly nothing may happen. Something may happen. You never know. However, you may be without telephone service. Good to keep your, uh, your phone's charged. If you hear about any type of natural disaster coming your way, make sure you charge your phones and keep some type of backup battery uh, like that um, available. Uh, running water and or electricity may be affected. If you're at home dialysis, you got to think about that. Roads and bridges may be flooded or impassable. That, that happened down in Houston. You know, if you're in Louisiana, a lot of the bayous down in Mississippi, you got to think about this, man. We got to play it smart and, and be strategic about this. Um, you may be unable to get to your dialysis clinic for treatment. How many people's clinic, you've seen it on TV, the news saying the Vita or Fresenius is closed, or you called and no one answered the phone. That happened a lot, all right? Because you got to think about the staff. If it's a snow, a blizzard, 
let me tell you something. And I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. If it's maybe a foot of snow and you or maybe three, four, five inches and there's some ice, I want to tell you, a lot of the staff is not coming out. I want to be honest with you because I've seen staff like I've seen little shit and staff not come out, call out because they talking about the sheet of ice. If I can get there and other people get there, why can't you get there? Patients can get there. Why can't you? But if it's about four or five inches, you know, depending on where you're at now, okay, if you're in the city, like an urban city, and <laughs> and you got staff that you may hear say, I ain't coming out in no snow. And, and, and like, say if you, like, say, for instance, you're at the unit, right? You're watching TV. You know how, how patients sitting at the chair watching TV. And most of the time in the evening shift, you're watching the news or Wheel of Fortune or TMZ or whatever, right? CBS News, ABC, whatever. Evening news with Tom Brokoff. And then you may see a pending storm coming, right? And they start talking about warnings and you see the staff coming to take your blood pressure and write your vitals down. And they see that and you, you know, look up at them and say, it's going to snow tomorrow. And you have some staff, I kid you not, right there in front of the patient say, shit, let that snow come. I'm not coming to work. I mean, are you, are you serious? I seen that. I seen that. I mean, I couldn't really say nothing because I'm visiting another unit. I'm just a PRN nurse coming to fill in. That's not my home unit. So who am I to say? I mean, I'm just walking by hearing that. And, and the patient laughing and the staff laughing after the comment was said. I mean, and, and, and they was for real. But they're not coming. If it's snowing, you better bet people are going to call out. I witnessed it. Even at a nursing home where I was managing three units, we had to try to dialyze patients that were in the nursing home early so um, the staff didn't have to come in. Let me tell you one story before I moved on. Please, just, just bear with me. I, I kid you not. I kid you not. This is a true story. From my, from my memoirs working as a dialysis nurse, I kid you not, true story. In 2010 in Baltimore, there was a blizzard pretty much, all right? And I lived in Baltimore, but I lived in the suburbs in a place called, How I mean, uh, Hartford County. You can Google it, Hartford County, Maryland, Bel Air. And you see how far it's from uh, Baltimore City, Woodlawn, Merlin. I was working at DeVita, DeVita Northwest. And it was, uh, they had called for snow. And, but during the day, I worked a long shift that day, right? We started at uh, 5 30 or 5 o'clock. Patients went on at 5.30, 5.45. So, you know, it was cloudy during the day and they called for, for snow. And normally, you know, the, the medical director, they'd be planning what you're going to do. So, okay, so maybe about three, two, three o'clock started light snowing, right? By five, six o'clock, it was coming down, right? Patient, yeah, patient is supposed to come off. I think like 7, 7, 38 o'clock, last patient. Tried to call a doctor, like, what the fuck you going to do? What's up, right? So we take the patients. I'll excuse my language because every time I think about this story, it pisses me off. Um, we we uh, take the patients off, right? Now, it's gotten so bad that MTA or the mobility the bus from the state that picks patients and take on the dialysis, they ain't coming back. It's too bad out there. The roads are messed up. Um, it's a shit gridlock. It's a freaking mess. 
So time moves on, right? Eight o'clock, nine o'clock, nothing. No, see, you can't leave. I couldn't leave until the patients leave. I can't leave them there. You can't, the nurse, the charge nurse, and has to have a staff there with you. You can't leave until all patients are gone, right? So back then, 2010, I'm in my fucking head, right? Shit, I got to get fucking home. I live like an hour, an hour, hour, 15, 30 minutes away from the unit. I got to get home before this shit piles up, right? So what happens, we end up getting stuck in the unit. The power goes off, it's 8.30, 9 o'clock. The lights goes off, nothing to eat in there for the patients. We have four or five patients in there, diabetes, uh, blood sugar dropping, all kind of shit going on, right? Nothing to eat, nothing. So we ended up having to call uh, the, the fire department to come rescue me, a tech, and five patients out of that DeVita dialysis unit. Then they took us to this hotel, drop us off, and um, the Vita, you know, they paid for it, but I was there, had to use my own money to go across the street to a gas station to buy patients snacks so they can have something to eat, right, to the next morning. I was so freaking pissed off, and... um. Then, after all that, DeVita didn't want to pay me for the time I stayed with the patients. Are you fucking kidding me? They didn't want to, they wanted to pay me from 6 to 10 o'clock. They didn't want to pay me like 24 hours being with the patients, right? They didn't want to pay me. So, of course, I want to be pissed off. Who does that? But yeah, I'm going to tell you, this is not a bashing of DeVita. Those are some ruthless guys, right? They ruthless. They treated me like shit when I got injured on the job. No fault of my own. Pretty much destroyed my life. All right, pretty much. But God got the last word. So let's move on. Uh, to this uh, hurricane disaster plan. So if something happened, you may not can't get to the clinic, right? You try to call, no one answers. They're not coming. They're not going to open. Some may be open. They'd be understaffed. It, it's a mess. It's a mess if you ever went to a unit when it, it snowed or some type of natural disaster and they tried to get you in. You know, they may run you three hours, two and a half. Uh, your vitals may, may not be taken. It's a, excuse my language, but it's a fucking mess. And I'm not exaggerating behind it. I've lived that experience and I'm here to tell you. And that's why I want you to be mindful and do these broadcasts so you can be prepared when this happens. You don't have to go through this quagmire. The local hospital emergency room may either be very crowded, all right? Because other people, they got other illnesses. It's not just kidney disease. It's other people with other problems. Or unable to provide you dialysis because if you go to the ER... They got to call dialysis. The nurse has to be called who's on call. And if they live out in the suburbs, if they don't live like 15 minutes near the hospital, you better bet it's going to be about at least a couple of hours before someone gets there and hooks you up. And what if they're on their way there and their car slides off the fucking road? Then who's going to do treatment? Can't no ICU nurse do treatment. Can't nobody else do it but a dialysis nurse. 
So this is the type of stuff that you got to think about if you're a dialysis patient and you're prone to emergency disaster or you live in these areas where something could happen and you're depending on the hospital, the ER. Hey, I'm here to tell you. It may, depending on where you at, you may have some luck, but just, just keep this in mind. If it's a natural disaster and it takes you a while to get there, it's going to take the dialysis person to get there as well. It's going to take them a long time to get there as well. And if they got a family and this shit messed up where the natural disaster messed up their home or something where they can't get out, that's SOL. You shit out of luck because who else is going to come in? They're going to have to call somebody else to come in and do it. And what if that other person is affected? Who's going to do the dialysis? That's why it's very important to do your own dialysis at home if you can. You wouldn't have to worry about it if something happened. All you have to do, all you would have to worry about is your power or water. And you can solve that with a generator or a water holding tank. But if you depend on the dialysis unit or the ER to get your uh, dialysis, if something happens, nah, nah, buddy. It, you, you may, it's a gamble. It's a risk, just like going to Vegas. It's a gamble. All right, so let's be prepared and and, and let's go through this and, and, and let's be proactive with this. All right. So so as I said, the local hospital uh, emergency room may be either very crowded or unable to provide dialysis. Therefore, you may need to miss one or more dialysis treatment. That's real. That is real. You ask the people when uh, Hurricane Marie came to Puerto Rico and then knocked out, excuse me, the dialysis facilities. All right, and people who lived out in the um, uh, rural areas had to freaking eight hours to just to go to a dialysis treatment, had to fly from a plane uh, to go to maybe San Juan or somewhere else, catch a truck, take another two hours to go to the unit, do your three hours, get back on the truck, travel three hours back, to the airstrip and then travel two hours or so to get back home. What the fuck? Come on, guys. That oh, man, I feel for people that, that had to go through that. I really do, man. That's why we got to make this really visible, viral, share, whatever you got to do to help. Um put this in the eyes of people to um, show them that we got to be prepared for this, okay? Especially if you want in-center dialysis. If these guys can't be equipped when something happens, then who else? If you can't depend on the emergency room, the dialysis unit, you can't go to no urgent care or patient first or any one of them. They ain't got no damn dialysis machines. The next best person is you. Is you. That's the next best person. Did the, you can't depend on anybody else. You can depend on yourself. Get your, get your machine. Learn how to do it at home. Be efficient, proficient. Natural disaster come your way. You're prepared. You got your machine. When it passes, electricity comes back on. You go for it. So what should you do? What should you do if this happens? Natural disaster, hurricane. What should you do? What should you do? Somebody please comment. If you're watching this broadcast, not just in the um, watch party, but on the actual feed so we can put your comments on there and let people see so they can 
uh, experience uh, the education moment. What should you do? What should you do? I don't want to tell you what should we do right after this broadcast. All right, what should you do? One, stay your butt at home, all right? Stay your butt at home unless you are hurt. If there's something going on out there, all right? Trees down, uh, power lines around your house down, it's flooded. You live in the bayous where if you flood, you got freaking alligators uh, swimming in the water, snakes. Stay your butt home, all right, unless you're hurt. And if you're hurt, make sure you cover that wound if you got any wound, right? Because that dirty water, if you got sewage and all that, if it hits that wound, oh, Lord forbid you get some type of uh, E. coli, some uh, staph, eat flesh-eating bacteria, all right? Begin your three-day emergency diet. And we're going to talk about that. I'm going to give you a three-day emergency diet, all right? Now, again... This is for educational purposes only. If you go outside of that, that's on you, okay? That's on you. But we're going to talk about the three-day emergency diet as well to help you out. Wait for instructions and details about dialysis on TV, radio, phone, or messenger. Now, you know, a lot of news stations post um, what dialysis units, <coughs> excuse me, what dialysis units are open, <coughs> what's closed, yada, yada, yada. A lot of these units post to the local broadcast stations as well. Uh, yeah, absolutely, uh, Audrey, about the evacuation routes. But Audrey, check this out. I agree, depending on where you at, but what if you're in an urban city and everybody trying to evacuate at the same time? <clears throat> what do you do? I don't want to be in that that cluster of, of jam, log jams sitting in the vehicle. It's almost like running away with um, Noah's Ark, that water come flooding down and you right there at the, uh, trying to get out of there. I just stay home, but no, you're right. No, learn your evacuation routes and try to find multiple ones if you can. Me personally, just my opinion on evacuation routes, I always say, Everybody's going to be trying to get out at the same time. So what do you do? And then where do you go when you evacuate? If you don't have a predetermined destination, where do you go? Because everybody else is going to be going to the same place. So I, I just, God forbid that something happened where people have to evacuate like that, because if they do, Oh, my God, it's going to be a, a cluster. I thought I saw Jared Brown pop in the broadcast. Uh, please, Jared, if you did, hop back. I, I saw you. Um, but, yes, guys. Um, and then, Audrey, that, that's the next um, um, 
pointer that I was about to say on what should you do. If you must evacuate the area or go to a shelter, tell the person in charge about your special needs and take your emergency survival kit. So if you do evacuate, as Audrey suggested, and Audrey, welcome. Audrey Langston, thank you so much for tuning in. She's out of Florida. God bless you and definitely look forward to you forward uh, on you being on the show. Um, yeah, absolutely. It does depend on where you live. Uh, so to help me talk about this topic a little further is um, host of the hit show that comes on every Wednesday from 8 p.m. I'm sorry, from 8.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. Warriors Quest, no other than Jared A. Brown, all the way from Hooper, Utah. What's going on, Jared? Hey, brother. Hey, brother. How you doing? Pretty good. How you doing? Welcome to the show, man. Thanks, Thank bro. you for joining us. And I, I, I know you have some snow going on in Ho Hooper, Utah. Yeah, yeah. It's snowing, bro. It's it's a uh, it's coming down pretty well, but uh, you know the where I live, it's rural, and the farmers need that moisture. So I'll put up with it a little bit. Our farmers need it. You know, by the time spring rolls around, they'll need all that water coming down from the mountains. So it's all good. So, are there any dialysis units near you? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, we've got you know, there's a dialysis unit just in Layton, Utah. Uh, there's a dialysis unit uh, in Ogden, a couple of them in, in, in Ogden. So, yeah, I've, uh, are, I've traveled around and I've actually tried to pick them out a little bit. Are, are those areas impacted as well with this snow? Uh, you know, a little bit. Uh, we've got, you know, we've got a bunch of, uh, there are people that actually get hired out uh, that for a living, they'll go and plow snow and, and these trucks that are geared towards you know uh nights like this and so it, you know that most of the roads are going to be pretty taken care of uh the question is it's not necessarily the roads but the question is is really uh, are the the cars and vehicles you know prepared to drive in in in, in snow conditions like this mm -hmm. you know that's really the question Mm hmm. So, Jared, as I was mentioning, I was talking about the hurricane disaster plan. Now, in a place like Hooper, Utah, are there any natural disasters experienced there other than snow? Do you get windy weather, uh, flooding, thunderstorms, lightning, uh, hurricanes or tornadoes? You know, we get some twisters, you know, but we don't have like the we don't get like the the tornadoes or, or whatnot like even maybe even denver gets you know in colorado or kansas mm -hmm. um but they we the problems that we will get are power outages of course uh we will get some thunderstorms uh we get weather related where you'll get power outages and so i mean <clears throat> if something gets knocked out uh and you don't have power for three or four hours in, in a certain part of the city, then of course we're, you're going to be, you know, held hostage by technology and, and any sort of, uh, you know, uh, anything that's related to being hooked in by technology. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, uh, especially in winter conditions, or even if it's not winter, if it's in the summertime uh, and you've got uh, weather that's going to be causing any sort of uh, downpour you know, the, the, we're we're certainly not we're susceptible to to a lot of rain. Uh, we're susceptible to snow. I mean, man, if you like the outdoors, this is perfect weather. You know, because in northern Utah, we've got uh, all sorts of uh, you know we've got hiking, uh, we've got uh, great camping. You know, we've got weather like that, so it's great to be in. But again, you know, uh, we can have uh snow we can have rain we can even have lightning you know mm -hmm. so 
we're going to be held hostage to to the weather just like any other states mm-hmm. sometimes even more so in the in the winter time because of the snow mm-hmm. I, I i actually went snow skiing once all right once i broke my leg and then i never went back right right <laughs> yeah so uh a colleague of mine that joined in my watch party if you're still in the watch party watching joe mcfadden uh uh-huh nurse with uh Fresenius medical care nurse manager very very thorough manager nurse worked with him when he was a technician and he went through the ranks of being a nurse and now he runs a unit you know very like i say it's not the, it, it's it's not mostly it's not the staff man it's, it's a lot of times it's the company policies and stuff like that that i don't agree with but it's certain people you work with that right. really makes a difference in patients lives and this guy joe mcfadder is one of them so joe thanks for watching man i appreciate you i'm gonna come down uh unit one day when i'm in baltimore i'm back in dc so i'm definitely gonna come down and visit you the next time i'm in uh baltimore but jared check this out so i, I just mentioned what should you do to you know if you run into a uh, natural disaster, if one find themselves um, in this situation. So I talked about what you should do. Mm-hmm. Now I want to talk about how do you prepare? Because that's okay. very important. What, what what would you think if, if, if you had to experience uh, dialysis and you were, uh, you know, the weather like in Utah, wouldn't you think that that would be very important to be prepared just in case you couldn't make it to dialysis absolutely absolutely definitely i mean uh in you know uh i think it's a great idea to have preparation um in about anything that you that comes in life but especially with dialysis i mean this is your life support so i think it's a great idea to have some sort of preparation so if it's you know, if it's weather related, like here, I'm just going to talk about snow conditions, then try to find some sort of secondary, uh, you know, um, find some alternatives to get to dialysis, like make sure that you can call somebody who has four wheel drive, mm-hmm. uh, you know, uh, make sure you, you can maybe call Uber. I don't know. Um, just try to make a list of things um, that you can do if you can't drive your vehicle and you can't get there on your own you know i think it's a very good idea to make some sort of list to make some preparations you know Mm -hmm. you're thorough too i mean look look for things that may or may not happen even if they don't happen at least you'll be prepared oh absolutely absolutely so how do you prepare for something that may happen like this how do you prepare well, well me and jared know, oh i was gonna say well me and jared are going to tell you how i prepare right after this very nice very nice So Jared, how do we prepare? Well, what? just like anything, just like anything, you've got to like, um, sometimes it, I know it sounds silly, but, you know, go through some sort of rehearsal, mm-hmm. you know, uh, sometimes people don't like to role play, you know, and they get nervous or they think it's silly, you know, but role play through scenarios, you know, mm-hmm. maybe go through you know, have somebody that you can role play with and go through some sort of rehearsal in regards to what you may do if something happens. You know, mm-hmm. even if it's, uh, you know, going back and forth with dialogue, like a play, you know, mm-hmm. talk about what may happen uh, and, and go through go through it like maybe once a month uh, and talk about how you may respond when something like this happens. 
Right. Now, I want to give you, well, give the audience some some pointers uh, from this hurricane disaster plan uh, to help piggyback off what you said. Have a copy of your medical history and dialysis treatment orders. That's very important if you have to go to another unit or somewhere else, especially if you're out of town or if you evacuate, like Audrey mentioned, and you go somewhere far and you end up at another unit, you want to make sure you have your records uh, uh, and your treatment records. At least know what dialyzer you're on, how much heparin. You know, you want to have those orders uh, visibly uh, available. So if you do got to evacuate, then you got something to show the other uh, care person, Jared. Nice, nice. I like that. Uh, another thing, be prepared, how to be prepared, is to know the names of your nephrologist and your vascular surgeon. Who work? Who who did the work on your access? Right. All right. And if it's been years, still know who did the work on your access. Most people know who their nephrologists are, but definitely know who your surgeon is who did their work. Yeah. Um, three, know your medications. Carry an updated medication list with you at all times. Very important, especially if you got to go to the emergency room um, and they ask you, they normally ask you what medicines you want. You could pull out the list instead of saying you don't know. Uh, this should include the name of the medicine, the strength that you're taking, and how often you take each medication. And B, know which medications are absolutely essential for your survival, like insulin for diabetics. That's absolutely oh, essential. Yeah. Okay. Heart medicine, absolutely essential. Phosphorus binders, absolutely essential. All right. Uh, have at least one week supply on hand at all times, right? And then you want to rotate that when you look on your bottle for the expiration date. You want to rotate that when expiration, when that medicine expires. But have a week to the side. Don't even use none of it. Right. Just have it so if something like this happened, then you have it. All right. That's uh, great. Lawrence Hurst. Hey, what's up, Lawrence? I said hello all the way from UK to you, Jared. Hey. Thanks for yeah. turning into the show, Lawrence. Yeah. And then Lawrence also said prepare, communicate, and be aware always for sudden changes. He's right. You're He's right. absolutely right with that, Jared. You, you got to be prepared for sudden changes, man, because the way this what's happening in the world today. Um, you just never know what the natural disasters, global warming. Yeah. And not only global warming, but you, you, you know, it just weather in general. Is so it, it's so random, you know? And so it, it's incredibly important to, to try to get the weather from your phone, try to get, you know, if you can't watch it on, get it on the TV, if you don't have you know, internet access, but, watch the weather, watch the news, watch the current events. I mean, there are so many things going on. Let's not even talk about what's going on with Iran, right? Absolutely. I agree with you 100%. Uh, 100%. Uh, if you're watching this broadcast right now, please, it's, it, and if you're a kidney warrior, it's your obligation, moral obligation to share this broadcast so other warriors can get this information as well. We're about sharing the knowledge and making sure everyone uh, has an opportunity to be exposed to this information. Uh, Jared, also, one should get and wear a medical emblem. You've seen them, haven't you? Absolutely. Right. That the wrist bracelet to say mm -hmm. I'm a kidney warrior or right. a dialysis patient. And, you know, on there, you just got your blood type uh -huh. and um, other information. Let them know if you were diabetic or on dialysis. 
because uh, well, if something right, happened to you, yeah, yeah, you don't want people if you rent if you like pass out or whatever, you don't want people to start no IV in your dialysis on, especially the um, emergency personnel. They have a habit of sticking an IV in there or the nurses at the emergency room and they have no business touching the access. Right. Um, also, in order to be prepared, one should pack an emergency box, review and restock every May before hurricane season begins. So already have an emergency box, Jared. I mean, we have one. When I worked in dialysis, each unit is supposed to have a disaster uh, box and a disaster plan or okay. emergency box so where emergency we keep. Box. Okay. Yeah, we it's, it's it's like it's like this big chest uh -huh. that you can get from Home Depot that has to uh, open it up and it's deep. And they put normal saline in there, uh, syringes, uh, IV lines, needle, I mean, clamps, these blue clamps, tape, gauze, fistula needles. So if you had, well, some some people are already going to have a fistula needle in. If you got to evacuate, you got to pull the needles out outside wherever you right. evacuate if you inside the unit, right? But I say all that to say they even have one just in case something happens. So why not uh, someone who undergoes kidney dialysis have their own emergency box and pack it and just have it sitting there, especially they live in these low lining areas like Florida, Louisiana, Mississippi, those Gulf states, or even if you're in Hooper, Utah, up in the mountain areas and you get snowed in. Right. It's good to have an emergency box. What do you think, Jared? Yeah, I, I'm all over that. I think an emergency box is awesome. I mean, yeah, I, flashlight. We have yeah. flashlight and all kind of stuff in. Right, flashlight, first aid kit, maybe a little, uh, you know, flask of water. You know, emergency. You know, some sort of water bottle. Uh, you know, it, 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 people here in Utah are really big on storage, uh, food storage. And so you can actually go into Lowe's, Home Depot, and you can buy food storage, you know, that's in these like uh, little, these big, you know, bulk containers. And so, you know, the, the any sort of uh, storage, any sort of uh, kit that you can uh, buy that, that helps you prepare for something that's random, I think is a great idea because, you know, who knows? I mean, what if there's, you know, God forbid, but what if there's something that happens that, that makes us, so that we're out of power for you know a month i mean we never know i mean again you know i'm not asking that we're in some sort of death you know a condition of decimation or any sort of uh, plight any sort of famine but um it, it's good to be prepared so that if something does happen that's arise something that's random at least you've made some preparations food water i mean any sort of uh you know, rice, wheat, mm -hmm. I mean, just something that you could store is a good idea. Yeah, please, if you're watching this broadcast, please share this information. Very vital, very vital for any warrior who's out there that undergoes in-center dialysis or home dialysis that doesn't know about uh, uh, emergency disasters. Uh, please direct them toward this broadcast and if they miss it, they can always go to Urban Health Outreach Media under the videos uh, archives and search for this video, which is or this broadcast, which is Natural Disasters. What does it mean to you as a dialysis patient? Now, Jared, we're going to get into the supplies that one should have in this emergency box. We talk about the emergency box and being prepared. So what, just just guess a couple of items. What do you think they have on this list that should be in an emergency box? And if you're watching this broadcast, please participate. Maybe you may have some creative stuff that you may put in your emergency box or some ideas for other warriors who may want to pack an emergency box. So 
please. I have a list of supplies that that is suggested or are suggested uh, on this sheet, which is evidence based information. But Jared, do you have? Can you guess maybe several items you think that may be on this item for sure, an emergency like, box? Is this just an emergency box in general, or is this for a kidney warrior? Yeah, for for dialysis person. Okay, so maybe binders, um, maybe a fifteen cage needle. <laughs> what? Um, well, no, this is for at home. Okay. If you got to leave, if you you know on dialysis and and you may have to leave because of natural disaster. Okay. All right. It went, All right. Yeah. Uh, maybe a blanket, um, flashlight, water. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe some sort of, uh, like something, uh, like, uh, m maybe a radio. <laughs> mm hmm Yeah. So maybe you some... did, you, you, you pretty much got a couple. So let me go down this list. Food for a three day emergency diet plan. So you're going to need that in this box. Food for a three day emergency diet plan. Number two, you said this radio also, you're going to need extra batteries for that radio. So stock up, like you can go to Dollar General or one of these right. dollar stores and buy a pack of batteries. And matter of fact, buy two packs, like eight pack or 16 pack or whatever, and have them. Candles and matches, Jared. Do not use if you suspect the gas leak, though. All right. Plastic forks spoons, knives, bowls, cups, and paper plates, baby wipes and or disinfected hand gel, napkins and paper towels, manual can and bottle opener, sharp knife. I recommend one of those army Swiss knives. That's um, a good idea. And, and you said this, Jared, first aid kit, mm -hmm. art, candy, and or chewing gum and that's to satisfy a dry mouth without increasing fluid intake that's a okay good idea. plastic jugs filled with clean distilled water label the jugs and then bleach plain without fragrances or other additives just straight Hyperchloric acid. I mean, hypochlor chloride. All right. Nothing, no uh, Clorox with lemon drops or Clorox with misty spray or nothing. Just regular straight bleach. All right. I'm going to go down that, that supply list one more time, Jared, for people who may have just came in and didn't hear it. This is some valuable information. That's why they should share it. Food for a three-day emergency diet plan. And I want to give you the list, the shopping list they enclose. Radio and extra batteries, flashlight and extra batteries, candles and matches. And when, if you do have candles and matches, do not use if you suspect the gas leak. You don't want to blow up the house. No. Plastic forks, spoons, knives, bowls, cups, and paper plates, baby wipes, and or disaffected hand gel, napkins and paper towels, manual can and bottle opener, sharp knife, first aid kit, hard candy and or chewing gum. This is to satisfy dry mouth without increasing fluid intake. Plastic jugs filled with clean distilled water and label the jugs as well. And also, last but not least, bleach. Plain bleach without fragrance or other additives. What do you think about that? That supply Is, sorry, list, Jared? The bleach, like for as a disinfectant, then or what would right, be? right. So you can disinfect the water if you need to. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. What do you think about this list? I think it's a great list. You know, you mentioned some really good things. Uh, I, I guessed a couple, and there's some, there's a lot of them I left out. But, you know, um, 
the the food supply is a good one you know and maybe uh the the hard candy is uh, one that i wouldn't have thought of but that's a great idea to prevent dry mouth mm -hmm. so now one may be asking steve jared guys what food should i buy what foods do you think i should get i guess i know y'all asking that right all right guys here's the list the following list of uh foods for a three-day emergency diet the, the diet requires no cooking jared so they ain't gotta find some hot stove or worry about you know bacon or the electricity to heat something out to heat something up with a microwave right. all right it requires no cooking. The one thing that I do say is ask the dietitian if you have any questions or concerns about foods that you should buy. Again, this is for training purposes and uh, should not be implied for a diagnosis treatment or care so here we go jared this is some of the suggested foods four small cans evaporated milk or three container brick pack milk four bags candy such as sour balls marshmallows jelly beans mints hard candy and lollipops Wow. Jar of grape jelly. Sugar. Jar of honey. Jar of peanut butter. Three small jar of mayonnaise. Open new jar each day. Two small cans unsalted tuna. Two small cans unsalted salmon. Salmon. I, I, that L is is quiet. That's what um, one my best friend told me. I used to say salmon, and he always correct me and say salmon. The L is silent. Uh, two small cans of unsalted chicken. Now I don't know about cans of chicken. I I have, uh, I have uh, uh, beef with that, but. <laughs> <laughs> You know, no pun intended, but right. um, chicken in a can just depends on how it is. It's, it, it's like mechanical poor chicken. Right. But, um, but in this situation, you know, one may have can't um, may not can't be avoided. And then two small cans, unsalted turkey, small boxes, low sodium cereal, puff rice or wheat shredded wheat, canned pears, peaches, pineapples, and applesauce in four ounce single serving containers, powdered drink mix, lemonade, grape drink, small cans or brick pack or cranberry juice, two loaves of bread, one box graham crackers, animal crackers vanilla wafers and unsalted crackers jared unsalted crackers what do you think about that no i like that i like that that's a good list the unsalted crackers is good you know because mm -hmm. that can help keep your you can eat small amounts and it helps keep your stomach full exactly exactly we got to be smart guys and be prepared no other company or organization is taking the time out. It's Jared, especially with this recent hurricane in Puerto Rico, you would think an organization would come out and, you know, may mention or talk about to see if, if they up to date with emergency preparedness. Now, even though they do do them at the units, they may hand the, the uh, patient a sheet of paper um, but they don't sit down and really really get 
really involved like we're doing. And I started this broadcast at uh um uh, hour and six minutes ago. Okay. Now there, there's no other organization that has personnel that you know out there like me and you are doing, you and I, uh broadcast trying to educate the masses that deals with kidney disease. Yeah, it it's, it's you know, and especially, you know, with with what's just happened in Puerto Rico, uh and you know, we've had major hurricanes in the last three or four years in Houston. Um, you know, and also and it's we've got to be able to 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 discuss things like this, uh, and we've got to make preparations. Uh the kidney warriors this is their life support. Uh, they need the dialysis. They need to be dialyzed. Uh, and if we don't talk about preparations, and uh, if we don't give them, um, if we don't give them the support they need, then again, they, they this kind of stuff is not being talked about. It's not being discussed. Uh, and it certainly isn't to openly or publicly as as often as it should be. And you know, I'm glad we're doing it. Because, you know, if we have an opportunity to help save a, save a life because someone is more prepared because of what we've done tonight, man, then blessed be what we're doing. Oh, absolutely. I agree with you wholeheartedly. And guys, let me tell you something. As, as we're moving on to this broadcast, I mean, if you're not in the room now listening to this broadcast, man, you guys are missing out on great topic, us talking about it. Uh, and the only way you can hear it is go back and listen to the broadcast once it ended. Right now, you're up close personal. If you have any question, you can ask us. So please share this broadcast, uh, comment. I can see it if, you, if you're if uh, you watching this video, I mean, this broadcast. If you have any concerns, questions, please uh, comment. I can see them. I could bring them on the broadcast so other warriors will be able to learn uh from 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 the comments so jared you know i talked about bleach right okay now the bleach is used to disinfect the water mm -hmm. now one may if you're watching this say how can i disinfect my water how can i disinfect my water i mean there is a process that one has to do to disinfect the water. How can I disinfect my water? People are asking, right? So this is how you disinfect your water. You keep the still water on hand for drinking. If you run out of stored water, you can disinfect available water for drinking, brushing your teeth, etc. Swimming pool or spa water should not be used as a primary source of drinking water due to its chemical content. I repeat that. I repeat, swimming water or spa water should not be used as a primary source of drinking water due to its chemical content. No, do not use disinfected water for dialysis. Again, do not, if, especially if you're at home, do not use disinfected water for dialysis because if you do, once your blood, that, that water hits your blood, you're talking about straight hemolysis, which is destruction of blood cells. So, um, so how can I disinfect my water? One, here we go, Jared. Before starting disinfection, first strain water through a clean cloth or handkerchief, Jared, to remove any sediment, floating matter, or glass. All right. Again, before disinfecting, before starting this process, strain water through a clean cloth or handkerchief to remove any sediment, floating matter, 
or glass. Okay, all right. Number two, water can be disinfected with household chlorine bleach containing 5.25% sodium hypochlorite solution. Do not use products in which there are active ingredients other than hypochlorite and use the following proportions for clear water. One quart water plus two drops bleach. So if you got clear water, one quart of water plus two drops of bleach would disinfect that. One gallon of for clear water plus eight drops of bleach. And then if you got five gallons of clear water, you want to add one, you want to add a half teaspoon of bleach, Jared. So I'm going to go back over that again. For clear water, one quart water plus two drops. One gallon water plus eight drops. If you want five gallons, that's a half teaspoon of bleach. Now, Jared, if you got cloudy water, right? Okay. If you got, a, you want to make a quart, that's a quart of water plus four drops. So you're doubling up. Mm -hmm. You want a gallon, that's 16 drops with cloudy water. And five gallons is one teaspoon of bleach. And now you mix water and bleach thoroughly by stirring or shaking in a container. Let stand open for 30 minutes before using. The water should have a slight chlorine smell. If not, repeat the dose of bleach and let stand for an additional 15 minutes. Water can also be purified by boiling the water rapidly for 15 minutes, Jared. Jared, how important do you think that information is that we just went over? Uh, it's very, very important. Very important. You, you know, if uh, if you just drink something and it's not, in, you know, if it's not disinfectant, then obviously you can you can run the risk of, of getting sick. So uh, it's very important to make sure that you're drinking pure water. Yeah, guys, share this video because we're not going to be on here much longer. Probably another... 10, 15 minutes, and, and the broadcast is over. So please, uh, share this video, tune in. Natural disasters, what does it mean to you as a dialysis patient? So Jared, now we move on to the last phase of this plan, which is a three-day emergency diet plan. Three-day emergency diet plan. All right. But before we go into that, we're going to stop, pause for the cause and take a break and come back right after this. All right, we're back with the three-day emergency plan, diet plan. Now, three-day emergency diet plan. This is definitely uh, what you want to be paying close attention to right now with this broadcast, the three-day emergency diet plan. So again, share this broadcast. We're about to get into it. This is the last of this uh, hurricane um, plan. So um, hurricane emergency disaster plan. So this is the last part, and we're talking about three-day emergency diet plan. So this diet limits fluid to only two cups. 
per 24 hours, okay? It only limits it to two cups per 24 hours. Hey, Jared. So we're talking about the three-day emergency diet plan, Jared. Okay. Now, one thing with this diet plan, this diet limits fluid to only two cups per 24 hours. All right, all right. Two man, two cups. That's a two lot. Cups. That's not much. No. Per twenty four hours. All right. So you're gonna do that sparingly. Exactly, and you gotta think about your meds, right? You gotta think about what you eat if it's salty. Mm -hmm. All right, and you are, we know with chemistry, wherever salt goes, water follows right yeah so you gotta you gotta yeah. really be prepared and careful so it is it is stricter than the renal diet this plan that we're about to talk about is stricter than the renal diet you normally follow to keep poisons from building up in your blood note diabetics should limit their intake of sweets when following this plan please be aware that the carbohydrate content of this plan may be very different from your usual meal plan. You may need to check your blood sugar more frequently. All right. Discuss with your dietitian or physician how best to manage your blood sugar. Day one. What you want to have for breakfast? This is what they suggest, Jared. Cereal and fruit. A All right, half cup cereal. milk. A half cup milk or half cup evaporated milk with half cup distilled water from sealed container. All right. Then they have a box of cereal, single serving. One tablespoon sugar if needed. One half cup canned peaches drained. For your morning snack, five vanilla wafers or four graham cracker squares. 10 sour balls for lunch jared peanut butter and jelly sandwich two slices of bread two tablespoons of peanut butter two tablespoons of jelly a half cup of canned pears drain and a half cup four ounce pre-made powdered fruit drink for your afternoon snack on this three-day emergency plan starting with day one the afternoon snack will consist of 10 marshmallows and a half cup of applesauce. That sounds pretty tasty. Yeah. For dinner, chicken sandwich. All right. Two slices of bread, a half can of two ounce unsalted canned chicken, uh, two tablespoons mayonnaise, and half cup cranberry juice. All right. Evening Cranberry snack. Juice, I like that. Evening snack. Ten jelly beans. Five vanilla wafers or four graham crackers. And then the canned chicken and the mayonnaise are perishable items, Jared. The unused portion should be thrown away if not eaten or refrigerated within four hours that makes because, sense because because one could get sick off of that jared right so let's go to th the three-day emergency plan day two for breakfast cereal and fruit again jared half cup of milk or mix one half cup evaporated milk with one half cup water from sealed container, a box of cereal, single serving, one box, uh, one tablespoon sugar if needed, a half can pears drained, morning snack, five unsalted crackers with jelly, 10 jelly beans. Lunch, turkey sandwich, two slices of bread, 
half cup, one ounce unsalted canned turkey, half cup of canned pineapple drain, half cup, four ounce pre-made powdered fruit drink. So what do you think about this so far, Jared, of this diet? You know, I, I don't know that I would want to have that sort of diet for a long period of time, but certainly for <laughs> But for that, uh, for the time that you're specifying, you know, I think that I think it's very doable. You know, you, you're limiting your salt. Uh, you're also limiting your, your 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 fluids, your water intake. So, you know, I I think uh, it, as long as you're you're following that, I think it's a great that's a great guideline. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can't imagine having this for more than three days, man. <laughs> right you know um canned turkey can you know yeah maybe the tuna um but uh so afternoon snacks 10 mints and a half cup applesauce okay okay for dinner tuna sandwich two slices of bread a half can two ounce unsalted canned tuna Two tablespoons of mayonnaise, half cup of cranberry juice. And for your evening snacks, five vanilla wafers or four graham crackers and 10 sour balls. Pretty good. Not too shabby. So yeah, you, and we're coming down to day three of a three-day emergency diet for kidney warriors. If you missed out, please go back after we finish this broadcast shortly and look over it. I think this was a great broadcast, Jared. Very informative. Great. Yeah. Um, for day three for breakfast, same thing, Jared, pretty much. Uh, cereal and fruit, half cup of milk, or mix half cup evaporated milk with half with a fourth cup water from sealed containers, mm -hmm. one box of cereal, single serving, tablespoon of sugar if needed, half cup of canned pears drained. Your morning snack consists of, again, five vanilla wafers and four grand or four grand cracker squares and 10 hard candies. For lunch, peanut butter and jelly slash honey sandwich, nice. two slices of bread, two tablespoons of peanut butter, two tablespoons of jelly or honey, half cup canned peaches drain, half cup, four ounce cranberry juice. Afternoon snack consists of a half cup of applesauce, 10 jelly beans. Dinner, salmon sandwich, two slices of bread, half cup, two ounce unsalted canned salmon, one tablespoon of mayonnaise and half cup clear soda. No dark colas due to high phosphorus. Right. Evening snack, five vanilla wafers or four graham crackers, squares, 10 marshmallows. And always have important numbers on hand, police department, fire department, your dialysis clinic, power company, nephrologist, hospital, emergency contact slash family and local radio station calls call signs nice yeah jared this man again i know i said this once before but this there's, there's no other organizations or anybody out there delivering this top-notch information um so so kidney warriors who go through this can be better prepared and armed uh, to deal with this disease uh, from from different angles. Right, uh, you know, it, uh, Urban Health Outreach Media Network. We're going to keep on uh, giving people information. We're going to keep on making sure they've got the education, uh, and we're going to be accessible. You know, whereas some of the other big wigs, some of the other big corporations big nonprofits, uh, they're not as accessible. So absolutely I mean, it's extremely important that you're accessible to the 
dialysis patients and, and we'll be there when they yeah we answer questions we have people reach out to us through messenger mm -hmm. um and we'll respond right back i mean right. i normally as soon as i see the message i try Absolutely. to get right back um like right then and there so if you have any questions pertaining to dialysis um treatment your care something that's going on at the facility you're not sure about your machine your treatment your orders i mean we don't make any type of recommendations we just tell you our experience and what maybe you can ask and to try to incorporate that in into your treatment or uh if you see something that's not right speak up to your nephrologist we give you uh questions that may may want to uh propose to see why something may be going on uh jared and even with you know warriors quest um you have individuals coming on sharing information and you know this not can only affect um kidney warriors and in center dialysis but if we take it a step further uh natural disasters can impact uh warriors who had transplants and it's taking uh vital medication to prevent rejection right rejection and right and say something happened where they can't get to the drugstore mm -hmm. that, yeah, that's another issue in that. itself and right. getting the whole that's why you got to have uh be prepared yeah so all right Vital man this, huh? this is so it, important. it is it is um subscribe to our youtube channel uh, urban health outreach media definitely needs your support you can see shows such as warriors quest uh, urban health outreach i mean urban health urban health to urban reno talk with tamika and steve uh some of uh, kenna Sorensen shows lisa baxter stephanie mo davis sasby and uh, tanya hobson these are all shows that we're on uh, our network at one time we still have them in archive on our youtube channel so guys is the information is available to you all you got to do is seek it and you shall find jared any last uh parting words before we uh, end this broadcast no i would just say uh, continue to be prepared you know uh, follow these guidelines uh, i mean if you didn't write it down then you know, hit us up and we'll make sure that for a dollar donation, we can get you a PDF file, but make sure that you've got this preparation. Uh, make sure that you're going through some sort of list and be prepared. Absolutely. I agree with you 100%. Well, Jared, do you know right now who you have uh, this week coming up on Warriors Quest? Yeah, I've got, uh, I've got uh, Jennifer who's coming up uh, on Warriors Quest. And uh, she's going to be telling her story. So, uh, man, and I've, I've, I had somebody uh, scheduled me th today as well for the 22nd. Uh, and I'm interested in getting people scheduled for February. So, please, if you're a kidney warrior and you'd like to get your story told, please uh, message me on Warrior's Quest or message me on Facebook Messenger directly. And let's get you scheduled so that we can have you on our live broadcast. Absolutely. I agree with you 100%, Jared. Well, guys, we thank you for tuning in and watching this special broadcast of Natural Disasters. What should you do as a dialysis patient? Um, very important, very, very important that you watch go back if you didn't see it um tune into it again natural disasters what does it mean to you as a dialysis patient i guarantee you you will not be disappointed what do you say jared absolutely you will not be disappointed and you look clear man you clear tonight good good i'm you glad to crystal hear clear crystal clear good good yeah good to see good to have you back <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.
All right, man. Thanks for uh, uh, joining me tonight. Uh, take take care out there in Hooper, Utah. Be safe in the snow. And uh, we see you this week. All right, man. On Warriors Quest. Thanks again, yeah, sure. guys. Thanks for tuning in, tuning in and watching this special edition of Kidney Disease Education Moment. We see you again with another special broadcast at any time. Just be prepared and be on the lookout. See All you right. later. God bless. Thank you.